Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is part two of the top-down shooter tutorial that we're making in Godot. Uh, I'm really excited for this episode. We've got some cool stuff. We're going to actually wire in some player movement. We're going to get our first script. And if we get time for it, I'd like to try and make it so that our player sprite rotates with the mouse. So those are my goals for today. Uh, we'll see how far we get, but definitely player movement is on the agenda. So right here, I've got our project open, which we created, and our player, stri or player sprite, which we made in the last video. So if you haven't seen that one, definitely check it out so you've got the same foundation that we're working from. So the first thing we need to do is add a script to our player. Um, scripts are basically the way that you actually interact and, and give behaviors to things in Godot. Uh, you've got all these pre-built nodes and, and scenes that are great and it's through scripts that you actually give them their behaviors and interact with them. So what we need to do is click our player here. I'm going to come up here and hit the plus button which is just to attach a new or existing script. I'll create a script called player.gd and here we are. Here's our first script. So what we want to do first um, is just get some input from the player. And there's two ways primarily that you'll handle input in Godot. One is on a per input basis. So you basically register a callback that whenever the player hits a button or you know makes a mouse click or drags a screen on a mobile device, whatever, uh, that callback will get fired and give you some info about what event, what input event just happened. So that's one way you handle it per input. The other way is by just checking input, like checking what the player is doing, if anything, every frame. So typically you want to use the first way, especially because most input is one off, you know, like you click the mouse, like you're not going to be clicking at every frame. That'd be like 60 times a second, unless you are the flash or something. Um, so for the most part, really just like handling input every time it happens is great. Sometimes, really the primary exception to the rule, I think, is if you are going to have a game where the player is going to pretty much continuously have one or more buttons held down. And you want it to be smooth, you want it to look good, and, and like very constantly changing movement or handling based on what the player is holding down is going to be important. So I think pretty much any shooter game is going to fall into that category, right? You've always got some direction you're moving or kind of moving around. You've always got a mouse that's moving. And so I think for movement, since that's something that's going to be happening constantly, we want to check that every frame, which is less efficient because, you know, there's overhead of checking that every frame and then looking at what you're doing or like looking, you know, how you're going to handle this movement. Um, but I think it's the right thing to do here. But I just wanted to give that dichotomy to show that like there are multiple ways to handle input. And we're going to use both of them in this project. For pretty much everything that isn't movement, we're going to use one-off input handling. And so just as an example, as a preview, when you want to handle uh, input on a one-off basis, you use a function called unhandled input. Um, there's also a variant called input uh, right here. And the difference between them um, and why you should generally use unhandled input is because for a uh, character, say, um, say you've got a menu open, right? You don't want to move your character because your the user is like pressing buttons and trying to navigate the menu. Like our character shouldn't receive those input events. They should be handled at the topmost level. And so what unhandled input does is it will only receive input events that actually have not been handled by something else. So generally you want to use unhandled input. Um, there are cases absolutely where you will use just regular input, which will give you any um, input event basically. But um, yeah, but for now we're not going to use either of these. We're actually going to check our input every frame. And to do that, we're going to use the process function right here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of some of this stubbed out in the comments that Godot scripts always come with. And as I do this, um, there is a like recommended GD script formatting, which is basically, you know, two, it's similar to Python's like the pip standard, I believe, uh, which is basically like two lines between every function or between sections of your code. There's also some recommended formatting for like which order or type of variables you should have, you know, like signals at the top, then export variables and constants or 
Um, I forget the exact order, but as best as I can, I'm going to try and follow that just as kind of a good practice, you know, for structuring our project and structuring our code. And it just having that consistency can really help your code maintain its readability over time. If you make sure that as you're writing it, it's con like consistently formatted and spaced and uh, your syntax is generally the same. So in Godot, this process function gets called um, for every script that includes it, it gets called every single frame. So for our player, we want every single frame to handle input. So what we can do is something like, you know, if, and then we can say like, uh, action, or whoops, input that is action pressed. So this is basically saying like, whatever action we give it here, we'll just use UI accept. It's basically saying, all right, if, uh, this action is pressed this uh, which is just a string label you can name actions in Godot if this is pressed do something now the issue is that we actually haven't defined what actions we want to look for we haven't told Godot what our input is gonna look like and so we need to do that now by default Godot does not come with uh, WASD keys mapped as input which is what we want to use so in order to do that, we can come up to project, go into project settings, come into input map, scroll down to the bottom. And so I'm just gonna add an input action for each of the keys that we're gonna use. So uh, up is gonna be one, we'll just do down, left, right, there you go, if I could spell. And so up is gonna be W, down is gonna be S, left is going to be A, and right, you guessed it, D. There we go. Okay, so now we have these four inputs mapped out. And this is actually gonna be saved for our entire project. And so the really cool thing we can do now, and one of the nice things about Godot having really good uh, like engine um, uh, like auto completion is that if I come into here, I can actually, uh, you'll see that it's gonna try and auto complete the actions that I just entered so it'll detect those new actions and give them as options here which is really helpful so we want to do something different for all four of the potential movement directions we could be uh, could be moving in so I'm gonna add and just stub out real quick uh, some if statements for each of these and I'll change these as they need to so down let's do left whoops left and we'll do right okay great so um, now we're handling, we're listening for input. Uh, we're not actually doing anything with it though. So here comes the fun part. Um, so first what we need to do is we need to tell uh, Godot uh, like how fast we want our character to, do, to move. And we're gonna do that by giving or creating an export, whoops, an export uh, variable called speed. So this is gonna be an integer um, and I'm gonna set it to be 100 for now. Um, we're going to use an export variable so that way we can easily tweak it up and down from within the editor and we don't have to come into the script each time we want to change it. So this is going to be our speed. Um, it's kind of a uni unitless uh, uh, like number right now, but just a general number you can tweak up or down as needed. So we have a speed, but now we that's just like a, a scalar, you know, it is just an amount, it's a magnitude. We need to actually create the direction that we're going to move in. So. To do that, I'm going to create a new variable in our process function, and I'm just going to call it movement direction. Um, and I'm going to make it a vector two, and I'm just going to assign it to the zero vector. So it's just an empty vector. It's not going anywhere in any direction, x or y. Um, one other thing, if you haven't seen the syntax before, if when you're doing an assignment, you use this colon operator right by it, what it does is it tells the GDScript engine to st to give a, a type to this movement direction um, of whatever is on the right side here. So because this is clearly a vector two, uh, the compiler will say, oh, well, this must be a vector two and it'll force you, it'll it'll give you the auto completion options for a vector two and force you to keep it a vector two later on. It's basically the equivalent of doing this, which is like explicitly giving that static type. Typically it's better to, um, allow it to infer that itself and that gives you a little bit of flexibility it's easier to refactor going forward if you need but anyway so now we have our movement direction um, and it's just zero right now so we're not moving anywhere 
So what we need to do is actually adjust our movement direction based on what keys are being held down. Basically, what we need to do is for each of these movement directions, we need to add uh, something to our movement direction vector. So for moving up, for example, we want our movement direction dot y uh, to be one, and then for down, it'll be, actually, I forget, in Godot, um, going downwards, like this direction, is actually positive, so this should be negative one. And then for left, we'll do negative one, and this needs to be x. And then for right, whoops, we'll do one. So basically what we're doing is we're just like changing one specific part of our movement vector, depending on which keys we have pressed down. Now, one thing that is gonna be kind of funky with the way we have it right here, is that if I'm pressing left and then I hit right, um, we're always gonna move to the right, because this comes later on in our if statement sequence. But that's that's okay. I mean, if you're hitting both directions, then you'd like I don't know what you'd really expect there. So you know, if there's weird stuff with this, we can fix it later. But this is perfectly serviceable for right now. Um, so now we have our movement direction. But here's the thing: uh, right now, if you hit say up and left at the same time, so a horizontal and a vertical movement key, you're gonna get um, a vector. Uh, of with a value of one, you know, like a value in two directions basically, and you're actually going to move faster um, moving diagonally than you would uh, just moving in one way, and we don't want that to happen. So what we need to do is just say, oh, whoops, we can just normalize uh, our movement direction um, and just set that equal to itself. So then we'll just, whatever we've pressed, once we are done handling our input, we'll normalize it, and then now we're ready to actually move. So Godot gives us a function we can call specifically for kinematic body 2Ds, which is what our player is, called move and slide. So this just takes a velocity basically, and it takes some other stuff you can pass in if you need to, like basically helping like with slopes. Um, because we're just top down, we don't really have slopes, then we're, we're good to go with just the velocity. So to get our velocity, we need to multiply our movement direction with our actual speed. So this is just gonna take this normalized movement vector, like our unit vector basically, um, and then multiply it by a scalar speed value to actually get our speed going in, or our velocity, which is going in a certain direction at the speed we give it. So what we can do is test this out now. So if I hit Command B and I hit WASD, we can see that we're moving. We move around, look at that, wow. Uh, so our game's pretty much done. We can ship it here uh, for probably 60, 70, 80 dollars. Um, kidding, obviously. So this is good. We've got movement. Um, and it's pretty simple, right? You just kind of handle the input actions that come in. Um, we're looking at it every frame. We're just updating and changing our movement. One thing to note is that move and slide actually returns your, uh, it returns a value, which is your actual velocity. So say we are up against a wall, for example. And I'm going through here, and I calculate a movement direction, and then I'm multiplying it by speed. So if we're up against a wall and we're trying to move towards it, our velocity is actually zero, right? Even if we're trying to move, like we can't. Um, but this value is still gonna be, you know, non-zero. It's gonna be our actual speed times the movement direction. Uh, and what this is gonna return then, in that case, is zero. So you can use this, like the return value of move and slide to, take or to like look at or you know store what you're actually moving for us we don't really care at this moment like there's no reason for us to you know store that value but just to note that move and slide does return that which can be really helpful so with that done i think movement is good to go for now the next thing then that we want to look at doing is actually making our character rotate uh, and face the mouse so it's actually really easy for us to do that uh, we have a function uh, that kinematic kinematic body 2ds have called look at and basically what this does is it just takes in a point of vector 2 um, and then it just for or it rotates your kinematic body to look at it so since our player is a kinematic body we can just use look at and basically what we want to do is just give it our mouse position so every frame we're going to give it our mouse position and it's going to rotate our player to look at the mouse pretty simple um, also, thankfully, there's a really nice function that we can use called get global mouse position that's just available um, in any scope in uh, Godot. 
And so this is going to get us our global mouse position, and this is going to cause us to look at it. So pretty simple. You just use those two built-in functions, and now you can see that if I move around and I start moving my mouse, that our character will actually rotate with it, which is sweet. And I think that's pretty much it. Like, it's uh, you know, it's nothing too fancy, but we have a character that we can move, we can rotate it, it looks at things, and now like. You know, the next thing we really want to do is have some handling so, you know, when you click, you will shoot, for example, and then we can start adding in, you know, a basic enemy and collision handling so that when you shoot and you hit an enemy, they take damage, um, and we can start doing some of the simple stuff that actually make it into a game. But I think this is great. We've got an awesome foundation for character movement. Um, unfortunately, we don't have really any animations yet with the um, asset pack that we're using, but we can get to that later. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. We've covered player movement and uh, you know player rotation. And I think in the next one, we'll probably start working on shooting. But thanks for watching, everyone. I uh, appreciate it. And definitely let me know if there's any feedback or suggestions you have in the comments. And can't wait to see you in the next video.